Hello, my lovelies. It's Trina, she who smells. Welcome back to my fragrant channel. So over the past few years, I've gradually accumulated some fragrances targeted at the male gender that I have decided are no longer necessary on my shelf. I'll talk about three of these today. These are not the only man, man fragrances that I own and wear, but all three grabbed my attention for today's video because they are freshies, which uh, if I'm honest, is it's just not my favorite genre. And I have a friend in mind who will appreciate receiving one, if not two, or maybe all of them. First is Versace Man Eau Fraiche. This is a woody aquatic launched in 2007 via perfumer Olivier Cresp. And uh, I'm a fan of Mr. Cresp, so I was looking forward to smelling this. Uh, the Eau Fraiche terminology is a sign that a, it's going to be lighter than probably a cologne in its concentration, and B, it's going to last, well, not very long. Now both A and B are positives in this case because I am not a fan of this juice, and I know it's a popular one, but it's a marine fragrance, and that aquatic quality rarely does it for me, although I admit to exceptions. Here are the notes. And those notes are interesting, right? Starfruit, tarragon, sage, saffron, and sycamore? Come on, I should at least appreciate it, right? And it's, again, it's Mr. Cresp's creation to boot. <sighs> I'm finally used to eating seaweed after living in Japan this long, but I still don't appreciate the ocean smell. And the bottle to me is uh, certainly not a selling point. It's on brand though. It's tacky. <laughs> it's Versace. I can see a private pool on Venice Beach. Tight Euro bathing briefs in gold and silver print on men with orange skin and chest hair wiggling their bountiful bums as they recline on blue glass and porcelain pool flooring. Mmm. <laughs> if I can get past that, and I, I don't mean the image, I mean the seaweediness, um, then I get something bright and zingy, but also a little bit obnoxious and cloying. But it's light. But ultimately for me, it's vomit-inducing glue sticks dipped in lemon detergent and slimy seaweed. But hey, on a hot summer day, this might smell good to me or on someone else. So to an aquatic-loving someone else, this goes. Bye-bye. Next in my lineup is 1881 by Nino uh, Ceruti, an aromatic fougère from Martin Gras, launched back in 1990. The notes are... Okay, so this smells how you think it should, based on the notes given. Not an exciting scent to me, but more classic, in a good way. There's juniper and cypress, definitely forward, and that prevents it from being over generic, at least for this day and age. But nonetheless, it does fall into the boring, freshy gentleman category for me, with the bergamot and basil at the front. The floral notes kind of lend a sophistication. And uh, coupled with the lavender and herbs, it kind of do remind me of scents from the 90s for men. But seeing as we're now 40, 40 years later, I guess it's not so generic, but is it dated? No, I think you could still pull this off, but I don't think it's a very young scent. It's, it's a moderate performing grab and go. It's very versatile, but yeah, it's not youthful. And if that's not what you're after, then that's not what you're after. But a redeeming quality of this uh, particular scent is the cost. I mean, this uh, 50 ml bottle was less than $30. So if, if you're not too obsessed with fragrance, but want to smell decent and don't want to break the bank, well, you know, this is probably a good option for you. I, however, plan to pass this on to the individual who raved about it to me. I'm sure he'll use it more than I will. Now we have Al Haraman's L'Aventure, which was released in 2016. Not sure who the perfumer is, but if I find out, I'll post it here or below or somewhere. Um, it's a fresh pineapple 
apple and black currant laced with a crap load of bergamot and lemon at the top. And it's infused with smoke and herby, almost sweaty metallic spices. And then it settles down into a woodsy birch, birch and uh, birch, birch and amber base. And yes, yeah, this is a Creed Aventus clone for sure, especially on the dry down. In fact, unless money is not a big deal for you, to be honest, I wouldn't bother with Aventus. But again, I'm not a freshie, so you know I'm not the right person to ask for this. But I do think this will do. It's not a perfect clone. It's more chemical with far less refined ingredients for sure, but the vibe, it's pretty close. <laughs> and it's a versatile scent. The performance is okay, but it does fall fast on me uh, to a, a skin scent in about a couple of hours. I think it's better on clothes than skin too. And even though it's a freshy fragrance, I do think you can get away with this in winter, although I haven't worn it myself in winter. And uh, I, I think it's difficult, unless you're really sensitive to cologne, uh, to be offended by this. Although I imagine one could be. <laughs> in 2019, an intense version of this came out, um, but uh, I haven't sniffed that, but I've heard that it's basically just a more intense version, no changes. Here are the notes. Now, Elemi, that ingredient listed, is, is like frankincense in a way. It's terpenic. I think that's how you pronounce it. Meaning the smell is typified by fresh pine needles or clean greenness with citrusy and coriander undertones. The bottle is an ugly fingerprint magnet with a rubber dust attracting thingy on the top. It's like brutalist 60s architecture that's unpleasant to handle and the top part's made of cheap plastic. But for the price, which is less than 50 US dollars, no worries. It's what's inside that counts, right? I can see how many a man might think that this or the thing it's trying to copy is the cat's meow and masculinity, but A, I don't think scents have a gender, and B, hey, <laughs> For heterosexual women, pretty, so-called pretty fragrances on men can do a better job than this, I think. But again, I'm not a freshy person. Attracting a partner, whatever gender, might not be your goal with fragrance anyway. It's certainly not mine. But if it is, and you're a guy, just n remember what I said. At the end of the day, wear what you love. And as I'm not a huge, of, a huge fan of uh, freshies, either on myself or on others. This one is not one of my favorites, sorry. Now the other thing is that freshy frags, even the quality stuff, can easily sway into kitchen cleaner territory for some people, I feel. Not that that is necessarily a bad thing to be clear, but in any case, I think I'm gonna decant this one into a more palatable container uh, that also fits more comfortably in my hand and then share it with my pineapple loving friends. It is objectively a decent smell. Just, it's not in any way sexy to me though. Maybe I'm the right person. Oh, and uh, for your information, it came in this impressive hard case. Let me find it. Okay, uh, here it is. So it's not that impressive really, but plastic and it's hard and if you can figure out any great ways of upcycling this let me know because you know most perfumes just come in paper boxes and I thought this was pretty cool. Okay c'est tout pour aujourd'hui mes belles amies. A rock tes belles oreilles. Ears. Why did I say that? Where does that come from? Oh it's an old Montreal um radio show. It's amazing what you remember like when something is music or jingles or smells, you can retain the information for a longer time than you think is possible. I mean, that sh that jingle was, that was over 35 years ago, or I'm just getting old. Okay, I'm rambling. Hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. I'll be back with some more perfume at a later time. Talk to you later. Bye.